In this video, I will give you a UFO disclosure update for the month of December. In August, Osvaldo Franco asked Congresswoman Kirsten Gillibrand about the UFO situation in which she responded that she's 100% committed and not going to let go of getting to the bottom of the UAP enigma. On December 21st, she was asked again about the UFO issue on the Brian Lehrer show. Let's give it a listen. Hi, um, I'm calling because Senator Gillibrand was behind a landmark uh, amendment to the 2022 NDAA that required... The That's DNI. the National Defense Authorization Act, the money for the Pentagon and military, uh-huh. Exactly, and it required them every October 31st through 2026 to provide updates to the public on UAPs, which are unidentified aerial phenomenon. I want to thank the senator for taking the issue seriously. So far, it's now December 21st. Nothing's been provided. I'm curious what she thinks is going on and if she thinks the Pentagon is taking it seriously. So I uh, appreciate your call. Thank you. Um, I met with the uh, head, uh, Dr. Fitzpatrick, uh, about a week and a half ago to find out where it is. And he says it's, it's soon to be made public. Um, it's being through its final review by the Secretary of Defense, um, the Secretary of, or uh, the Director of um, National Intelligence. And so he thought it could be within the next few weeks or days. So it is late, which, you know, of course made me slightly um, concerned, but he said it was not intentional. It's just the first public report. So they wanted to make sure it was well written. Um, and it should be out soon. So that'll be step one. Um, I've obviously cared deeply about this issue from a national security perspective, but also from a personnel perspective. Uh, we want to make sure service members and other members of the military that when they come forward with data and information and videos that they can actually give this information without having their careers suffer and being um, dismissed or disregarded in some way. Um, it's essential that we know uh, uh, and know what types of um, unidentified aerial phenomenon exist, and then we could do the rigorous scientific review to identify it. Um, some may well be weather balloons, some may well be drones, some well, well may be, uh, ad be uh, adversaries like China or Russia, um, and some may truly be unknown, but we need to know the, the entire um, collective group of what have we seen, what are the concerns, what technology is it, and can it be identified? And so that work is being done by Dr. Fitzpatrick and his team, and he's extremely serious and very focused, and I'm optimistic that it will be a thorough and thoughtful approach uh, and one that will have a public lens. So right off the bat, I will say that Senator Gillibrand was pronouncing the director of Arrow's name incorrectly as Fitzpatrick. It's actually um, Dr. Kirkpatrick. Minor oversight. But either way, from this sound clip, it is clear that she has not lost momentum or interest in getting to the bottom of the UFO issue. Some people recently have been saying that maybe Congress has lost interest in pursuing the UAP issue. Clearly, from this sound clip, that is not the case. The American people also want to get to the bottom of what is going on with UAP. So the Congress is doing the will of the people, and that's well received. The following clip is from December 20th, in which Pentagon Press Secretary, Air Force Brigadier General Pat Ryder responds to the question on updated UAP terminology. Come back to the room, yeah. Thank you, sir. Brandy Vincent from Defense Scoop. Um, at a briefing last week, senior DOD officials confirmed a shift in terminology for DOD and UAPs from unidentified aerial phenomena to unidentified anomalous phenomena to account for objects that aren't just in the air, but submerged and transition between mediums as well. NASA announced that it's working on its own study of UAPs that it's still calling unidentified aerial phenomena. Does this sort of shift and now lack of common language for the term UAP between DOD and NASA um, seem to potentially cause problems in the near term? And if so, how are the agencies working to get ahead of that? Sure. 
Uh, so the short answer is no, I don't, I don't think it causes any problems um, for better or for worse. I've been a part of the Department of Defense for quite a while and have seen on a lot of different uh, initiatives and efforts where, where terminology may change. I think the important thing is looking at the bigger picture, uh, ensuring that we're all working towards uh, common objectives uh, through interagency dialogues and, dis and discussions, which I would fully expect will happen in this case going forward. We have a very close working relationship with the, uh, in the Department of Defense with NASA, uh, and I have no reason to think that that will change anytime soon. Thank you. On December 19th, the debrief.org published an article titled Astronauts, Historians, Scientists, and Officials Convened to Discuss Stigmas Surrounding UAP, written by Baptiste Friscourt. I'm going to share a small segment from that article. Harvard astronomer Avi Loeb, who was also interviewed during the event, emphasized how we have yet to learn about the universe, citing a June 2021 Office of the Director of National Intelligence preliminary assessment on UAP as a turning point. Quote, the intelligence agencies and the military in the U.S. have data that indicates that there are real objects, Loeb said, adding that UAP has been observed on multiple instruments thereafter, citing past statements by John Ratcliffe, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, and former U.S. President Barack Obama on the subject, all of which served as the impetus for the founding of his own Galileo project. Now, that citation is absolutely fascinating because... It is a microcosm of what will become a macrocosm. The developments that were cited by Harvard scientist Avi Loeb, as he stated, led to the creation of the Galileo Project, which is a scientific effort by him and other scientists and other personnel to do a long-term systematic study of UAP. And that's one example of how things have shifted since the December 16th, 2017 New York Times article. But things are going to continue to shift on larger and larger scales, and you're going to notice it more and more. Another example could be the video I just shared with you with the... Brigadier General Ryder, he was asked about the alteration in how UAP are being referenced. Not one giggle, not one smirk, no X-File music during that presentation. Th that is an evolution. That is the result of the zeitgeist shifting and UAP being perceived as a serious issue. Whereas prior to December 16th, 2017, and frankly, even after to some extent, it was laughed at. It's not really being laughed at anymore. And this brings me to an amazing interview Jimmy Church conducted with Luis Elizondo's lawyer, Daniel Sheehan, who has an illustrious career as a lawyer involved with, with cases such as the Pentagon Papers and so forth. In the following citation from that interview, he talks about a group that he is putting together to ensure that we as a human family get to the bottom of what's going on with UAP. And this would be another example of how the New York Times article coming out and the developments that followed are changing the very fabric of our society as it relates to UAP. Now, we're only in the beginning stages of that. As time goes on, we'll see it more and more. Eventually, in my opinion, we will get disclosure and the UAP issue, frankly, will be discussed more than any other topic on the planet and covered in the news more than any other topic. And will be the number one mystery for scientists and academics and people at large. That is the future that we are quickly beginning to enter 
in my opinion. So basically what Daniel Sheehan is doing is he is putting together a civilian analog to the UFO office in the Pentagon that will do essentially the same thing. But let's put it in his words, and I quote, but the point is that we as a community have to come together now and put together an office that is com comparable because now we've been in a certain sense authorized to do this. I mean, the citizenry, we are the democratic forces of our country. You know, the Congress represents us. But the fact of the matter is they don't replace us and they don't take our place. We know that they're subject to all kinds of political pressure and financial pressure and everything else. But the fact of the matter is, is that what we're going to do is we're going to get a look at their budget. We're going to get a look at their budget lines that have made have to be made public on the websites and we're going to try to match all of those and we're going to major funders major people all throughout the country the business community and the in entertainment industry all across the country and say look we're not something like that to the stars academy there's no commercial venture underway here at all we're not trying to make a buck on this thing what we're trying to do is to put together a genuinely professional caliber staff, you know, so that they're going to be matching step per step what this office, that is the UAP office in the Pentagon, is doing. And if they miss that and they don't do their job, you know, we're going to move in to do their job for them. The American people are not going to stand by and allow our representatives to be coerced or pushed back or intimidated, you know, by the forces that have been trying to keep this thing secret for 75 years. So that's... That's the moment that we find ourselves in right now. It remains to be seen if Daniel Sheehan is going to succeed in putting together a group like this, but it seems like a great idea if it can help keep things moving to unearth the truth of UAP. I'm going to share another citation with you from that interview. Here, Daniel Sheehan explains how the United States Congress is trying to gain control over the UAP issue. What's happening here is this issue is still not entirely under control. That what's happened is from the time that Lou and Chris went forward and gave this to the New York Times. And the New York Times decided surprisingly to publish it. This has not yet come under control again. And so what's happening in part is the United States Senate in-house are attempting to get it under control, but they're trying to get it under the control of the Congress. They believe that the executive branch functions at the behest of the Congress, you know? This is a long constitutional debate of the equal power of the three branches of government, but the fact of the matter is that, from a basic point of view, the executive branch is supposed to function to carry into execution the laws and policies that are actually formulated by the legislative branch, and the judicial branch is, is to interpret them. And so, therefore, the recapture of control over this extraordinarily important subject matter by the Congress of the United States is what's in process right now. And if they can succeed in getting control of this and they realize that they have to exercise extraordinary care here, because if they miss Q and they release any of this information that the executive branch views to be a complete third reel, then the executive branch is going to lock down on them and they're going to refuse to really cooperate with them de facto. Now for the dessert. So here's a tweet by former Lieutenant Ryan Graves that he tweeted on December 16th, 2022, which was the five-year anniversary from the December 16th, 2017 New York Times article. And here it is. Proud to be on this journey of curiosity with you all. When I'm not with my beautiful family, I spent my time on the UAP topic. This is one of the most important conversations we could have, and I won't let you down. I'm excited to grow this conversation with you. And it really is a an integral conversation that our species, or as Daniel Sheehan would put it, our human family is going to have going forward. It, it, we have not received a smoking gun yet. We have not received an admission from the U.S. government that is more straightforward, that does away with plausible deniability, if you will. But I do think that's in the future. Five years on from the December 16th New York Times article. And I think that 2023 is going to be a profound year going forward the omnibus bill 
National Defense Authorization Act that has, I believe, 30 pages of UAP legislation in it will get signed by the end of this month, December. And I think that's going to put us on a whole other gear of the disclosure process. My last video, um, I, I shared with you an inter interview that James Iandoli conducted. And in, in that interview, George Knapp said that Congress has already received testimony from whistleblowers. And in addition to that, there are whistleblowers lining up to testify about legacy UAP programs. And he's aware of five individuals that are going to do so from the intelligence community. So 2023 is going to be a monumental year for the disclosure process. Um, I'm not going to make predictions per se, but I will tell you what I think is going to happen. I think that this process will escalate further and that it will escalate more than it has in the past five years combined, arguably. The crescendo, if you will, is going to be whistleblower testimony in future hearings and the learning of legacy UAP programs and potentially um, new videos being released. We will go from a world in which we're debating this issue potentially to a world in which we're trying to figure it out because it's already a fact of our reality. Buckle up, buy a lot of popcorn, and prepare your soul for 2023. I'm going to close this video up with a quote from Ross Colthart. He was on Coast to Coast AM with, with Bryce Zabel, hosted by George Knapp last Sunday. Ross has been relatively pessimistic about the disclosure process. But in this following quote, this is what he hopes we receive in 2023 at the very minimum. And I quote, So the best possible spin that I can put on this is that there is a very good reason for why the United States might be sitting on this issue, why it might be concealing it, because it basically wants to not show its hand. What I don't understand is there's a difference between acknowledging a non-human intelligence on this planet and then acknowledging recovered technology. You could do one without acknowledging the other. And that's what I think we should see. That's my prediction for 2023. My hope is that we will see some concession from the government that this isn't just anomalous technology in our atmosphere, in orbit and underwater, that whatever this is, it's not human. We've been on this path for five years now. And we are on the brink of the NDAA getting signed in getting a front row seat to 2023. The year in which we may have more progress on the UAP front than we've had in all 74 years preceding it. Now, ain't that a thing? I'm gonna play the disclosure fruit, flute. I'm gonna play the disclosure flute to help usher in a post-disclosure world and to bless your soul. And I will see you in 2023. Please do not forget to subscribe. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can check out my merch shop where I sell t-shirts. You could become a patron. You could become a YouTube member. You could give me a one-time donation. All of those possibilities are in the description below. Below, It's late. I'm forgetting how to talk English. Or you can just slap a like on this bad boy and I'll appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you so much for being here, enjoying this process with me. You know, I view my channel as a way to connect with other human beings. It's not just me creating a product and then uploading it to YouTube. I feel like with every video I publish, 
a connection between me and my fellow human being is further established. And I live for that. I'll see you in the next episode. Special thanks to all patrons, YouTube members, those that have bought merch, those that have given me one-time donation. I couldn't do without you. Thank you so much. See you in the next episode.